presenter, would I lie to you? The show where fabrication is the name of the game. On David Mitchell's team tonight, star of the award-winning sitcom The Thick of It, who says most MPs claim to love the show. My God, MPs will claim for anything. <laughs> it's Rebecca Franz. <laughs> And uh, a splendid comedian who's so young that last year he won Funniest Embryo at the Edinburgh Festival. <laughs> Jack Whitehall. <laughs> and joining Lee Mack tonight as the hapless, clumsy star of Miranda, she recently picked up three comedy awards, then dropped two, tripped over the red carpet, and threw wine into the crotch of Colin Firth. <laughs> it's Miranda Hart! And uh, a man whose will-they-won't-they they relationship with Margaret made The Apprentice a hotbed of sexual tension for five series. Nick Hewer! <laughs> and uh, we start with round one. It's Home Truths, where our panellists each read a statement from a card in front of them, and to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to separate the facts from the fibs. Nick, you're going to be first. When filming is over for the day, Lord Sugar and I sometimes wind down by playing ping-pong <laughs> on the boardroom table. <laughs> That's a hell of a story. True. <laughs> David, what do you think? Have a, have a minute just to let it sink yeah. in. <laughs> You don't play on a proper table tennis table. No, you just play you, on the boardroom table. You can table. buy. Um, it's underneath, actually, in the boardroom. It's rolled up, right. and then you unroll it and you clamp it on the boardroom table, stretched across, it, and you're in business. So is it just the net? Just a net, just or is there net. also there's no, not, we don't not have a, the lines. A, a mat with lines? No, no. It's just... the table is slightly bigger than regulation size. Right. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you... Is it not also curved? Curve. I thought it was curved. <laughs> <laughs> curve like... You're thinking of all swimming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to tell watching on television, but yes. how much room is there at the, at the ends of the table? Oh, plenty. OK, I believe you. Ample. <laughs> yeah. You have to be able to back off quite away when playing table tennis properly, I happen to know. <laughs> Can we stamp on this immediately? Lord Sugar's boardroom is plenty big enough for almost everything. <laughs> Yet you play table tennis. <laughs> Where do you keep the bats? Do you, are they under the table under, during the... Under the She's table. left now, isn't she? Under the... <laughs> how this whole thing started. It was my idea. You crazy fool. <laughs> it was my idea. No, but the point is that it's a fairly long, drawn-out drawn process. It is tense, it, it is nerve-wracking, particularly for, uh, for, for, for Karen and I, yeah. because we don't know what on earth's going on. It's only Lord Sugar who's master of all this. And I just sort of murmured to him once that I find this very difficult, and he said, well, look, don't worry, next time I'll bring in a net and some balls and some bats, <laughs> and it'll help you relax. <laughs> and that, and it, it grew out of that. So what does Karen do? How does she relax? Because if you're playing... She's umpire. She's umpire? <laughs> She's got a very keen eye. <laughs> what do you think, David? I think this is absolute nonsense, albeit convincingly told. I, I think if Alan Sugar wanted to play ping-pong, he'd have a proper table yeah. tennis table and he'd play it on that. So, so we, we think it's not true. We think it's not true. No. think it's a lie? Yes. OK. Um, Nick, truth or lie? It's a damned lie. <laughs> <laughs> It was a lie. Uh, Nick doesn't wind down by playing ping pong on the boardroom table with Lord Sugar. <laughs> Jack, you're next. Uh, I was once commissioned to paint a portrait of Giles Brandreth's cat. <laughs> <laughs> OK. You Would ready? you point out to some of the younger viewers who Giles Brandreth is? Giles Brandreth uh, presents uh, strands of The One Show, and he was an MP, and he wears jumpers. <laughs> Is a picture of him. Okay. <laughs> how okay. Did, how did he hear about you? I did a lot of art around the area, not like graffiti, but. <laughs> <laughs> what is this area? Um, barns. 
OK. And I've always been an artist. What, <laughs> what was the cat called? That... I can't remember the name of the cat. It was a black cat. Right. Lucky. Lucky. <laughs> How much did you get paid? Hundred and... Like thirty pounds. A hundred and like thirty Sick. pounds. <laughs> and also, I'm allergic to cats, so danger money. But it was like, <laughs> well, no, it was 130 quid, and I was 18 at the time. So at that Good stage money. of my life, I would have worn the cat as a mask. How did you pose? <laughs> did they didn't ask that. Did the cat pose for you, or did you? <laughs> play I had to do sit. I had to do sittings with the cat. Shut you... up! I did. Come on now. I did. You Start do not paint a cat and go, cat, sit on that for three hours. I just the cat. It was, yeah, no, and it kept moving around. It was the most annoying cat ever. Yeah. It was like, please, it's a cat. sit down. It's a cat! I'm gonna sit on the oh, stool! Why is it painting a picture of it? You couldn't do it. I'm gonna sit for three hours, Kate, me! It wouldn't! You can totally do a sitting with a cat. Cats are very sedentary. Yeah. They stay in one place all the time. You can't command the cat, but you tell there is a good moment. The cat seems to be sitting on the wall. Why is it painting? What position is the cat in the painting? Like, sort of that. No, come on. <laughs> so the cat is sitting or standing. I'm trying to. Sitting? Well, no. Oh, do you want me to do it like that? Yeah. Like, what is it like? But anybody with half a brain would have taken a picture of the thing, gone home and painted it at home, wouldn't I they? love this man. No. <laughs> I would have done that, but I didn't have that choice. She insisted that I come so that I could sort of get come to know on. the cat. I know Giles Brandreth. Do you know his cat? I know his wife. What's his wife's name? She's called Michelle. Is his wife is that Michelle? True? You were bluffing, weren't it you? It is. Do you know Giles Brandreth's no. wife? <laughs> so you were quite I a good artist, that. were you? Reasonably good if he's paid 130 pounds. Yeah, okay. I was. Just know that. That's fine. Stay there. <laughs> Draw me a cat. Right. I should, at this point, uh, tell yeah. viewers at home that uh, whilst we do like to receive your paintings, we can't return <laughs> any of them. The suspense is good. David is captivated. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, rather good. David's face is going, this is pretty good. This funny. is pretty good. to do it quite quickly, obviously. Well, that's fine. We're not so going to... So, David, this is an extreme sport, isn't it? <laughs> People have just turned over, they're going to be thinking, what on earth is David looking at? <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, Jack, reveal the cat. Well, Lee, it's time to make up your mind. What do you think about Jack's story? Is he telling the truth, or is he, in fact, telling us a lie? I am... I'm right down the middle. Cos Giles, does he know you at this point? No. He so. knew me through the family, through right. mother and their mum, my mum. <laughs> <laughs> he knew me through mother. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jack, you're succeeding in making David look positively working class. <laughs> <laughs> I, I barely need to be here this week. <laughs> I can't... I can't give it to him. I think it's a dreadful lie. <laughs> it's 100% true. I'm, oh, oh no. well, you two fight it out between yourselves. I'm no, not getting it's involved. True. I'll go with you because I like you. Oh, <laughs> touch me. <laughs> um, okay, they're both saying true, and I, I don't want to argue with the team, so I suppose okay, I'm you're saying go it's true. true. Jack, true or lie? It is true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. And uh, this is the most exciting part of all. We've got the painting no here. Yeah. <laughs> now, this has been lent to us by the, the Brandreths, Giles and Michelle, and this is a bit special. Get ready. <laughs> Here's the thing. That's the most canine cat I've ever seen. Here's the other thing. We've also got a 
photo of the cat, and we're going to do a very modern split screen effect. Look at this, ready? <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Yes, it's true. Jack was commissioned to paint a portrait of Giles Brandreth's cat. <laughs> our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. So please welcome this week's special guest, Zazie. <laughs> so, uh, Miranda, we'll start with you. How do you know Zazie? This is Zazie, and we once had a trial together for a professional ladies' football team, but we didn't make the grade. There we are, Miranda's footballing friend. Lee, how do you know Zazie? This is Zazie. I once cut off her ponytail uh, on the school bus, thinking she was my mate Paul. <laughs> Lee's short-haired schoolmate. Nick, what's your relationship with Zazie? Zazie, my uh, neighbour's daughter, she offered to mend my computer and inadvertently emailed to everybody in my address book a picture of my big toe. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Um, Miranda's failed footballer, Lee's cropped classmate or Nick's accidental emailer. Uh, David. Um, so, Miranda, what was the professional football team you tried out for? It was for <laughs> QPR Rangers. No, Q QPR. QPR. <laughs> QPR. <laughs> so, uh, what age were you? Uh, about a sort of early 20s. Early 20s? Mm. So, isn't that, that quite old to be breaking into professional football? <laughs> you haven't seen QPR play, have you? <laughs> <laughs> What position did you play? Uh, well, we, we were just sort of <laughs> tipping up. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just seeing. <laughs> Can you imagine if this is what she'd have done on the day? <laughs> A lot of happy memories yeah. of your footballing past, obviously. We were regular team talk. Yeah. We were just hoping that they'd see us. <laughs> Say, oh, you're a defender. <laughs> so you, uh, I don't know why I'm finding this so funny. Um, so had, had you, when you turned up to, to try out, had you ever played football before? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you just thought, you thought, if football's probably not a thing that involves practice. <laughs> You've either got it or you haven't. I'll, t I'll wait until I'm 23. <laughs> QPR, yeah. and they'll probably let me in the team, and there I am, sorted. <laughs> yeah, well, we played a bit at university, I'm actually crying. Oh, so you had played? <laughs> we played a bit at university, sort of mucked about, and we thought, hey, you know, we're quite good. <laughs> Just you and Zazie playing, or were there other people in this team? <laughs> we had some male friends who were, like, really into football, and we lived with them. And uh, we one day probably, you know, trying to impress, said, we'll come and play football with you. And so that, they were thrilled. So, <laughs> so you went... And they said, hey, you've got some skills in it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, so, Nick, what went wrong with your computer? What was...? Running slow. Grindingly slow. And uh, why didn't you contact someone, you know, a proper computer person? No, or maybe she is a proper listen. computer person who happens to be your neighbour's yeah. daughter. You... Very what? simply, because we know them very well. I know that she did a computer course at university. And why would I go out and spend a fortune when Zazie can come in yeah. for a tenner? <laughs> and why, why was there a picture of your big toe on this computer? No, one of the issues was it obviously was clogged up with stuff and I needed it purged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I told her that there were various folders that needed to go. My medical folder had to be uh, uh, deleted, yeah. a number of other folders I had to get rid of. My doctor is in London, we live in the country. I had had a very, very nasty uh, accident, stubbed my toe, heavy bruising, <laughs> the threat of a lost nail, <gasps> and I thought that I would email it to the doctor oh, okay. and he would then email back advice. Yeah. Anyway, that was some time ago, and I wanted it now deleted. And, of course, she wasn't quite as good at her computing skills as I had hoped she was, or, indeed, that she had claimed. <laughs> you are terrifying. No. I don't like to say this in front of her, but she had been drinking. 
<laughs> and she pressed the um, email thing, and 700 people, including business contacts, serious people, were emailed a picture of this battered toe. <laughs> And Including Sir Alan Sugar? Yes. He was the he first. He received a it. picture of your toe. He sent one back of his. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was actually quite a bruising experience because people didn't find it at all funny. Lee. Um, yes. Z you, you pronounce Zazie's name Zazie. That's the kind of guy I am. I'm a maverick. And you were at school with Zazie? Well, I was, yes. And before it's pointed out, I was in a different year, yes. OK. <laughs> How much older? Uh, I think there was about four years difference. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you okay. cut off Zazie's ponytail. Can I just point, point out, we didn't actually... We weren't actually at the same school. I should get that in, really. We were on the... the we call it the school bus. It wasn't a school bus that yeah. was only for school children. It was the bus I got to school. So you I went... You, oh, you, you it was you a public to bus. And, and she was a child who didn't know on the bus. Yeah. And you got it starts to sound like a court case, Debbie. Can you back off? You, <laughs> and you, you attacked her head with a I sharp object. I didn't attack her. I did not attack a child you, sorry, on you the You mistook a child's head for the head of one Man. of your friends. Yeah, I was about 15. She was... Uh, I don't know what she was, but she, she looked Three. like... She Three! Looked like... <laughs> Why did you want to cut off Paul's ponytail? Well, Paul's ponytail, I've always found a little bit annoying. I mean, let's face it, have you ever seen a ponytail on a man and not wanted to cut it off? <laughs> it's, still, it's still a bit of a step to yeah. actually have a go, isn't it? Cos, after all, it's, it's up to people how they have their hair. It's not up to you, is it? <laughs> Trust me, David, if it was up to me, you wouldn't be having your hair like that. Yeah. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you. Paul somewhere else on the bus. Yes, Paul sat next to me and went, hey, go over there no, and cut no. my hair off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite, it's quite... All right, Paul, stay there. I'll do it now. So this, that was a gullible fool. This is an environment in which you, you, you don't know Paul's on the bus at all. No. Paul, I you don't You just know... see the back of a little girl <laughs> and go, there's Paul! <laughs> where are my scissors? <laughs> might know Paul was somewhere on the bus and then you see the ponytail and you've only got a moment quick snip. You don't even know Paul's there. You're just seeing ponytails and snipping away, despite the fact that Paul is apparently wearing a little dress. <laughs> so, so, David, what are, what are you thinking here? I'm slightly inclined to believe Lee. Ooh, what do you think uh, about Miranda's story about the football <laughs> trial? That seems... <laughs> That very much came to life, didn't it? <laughs> he certainly seemed to know a lot about football, yeah. so I was impressed with that. I think it might be Nick and his separating toe. Emailing yeah. of the toe. And what about I you, reckon, Jack? I reckon it's Nick. And what about you, David? Well, I don't know. I'm stuck. Okay. But my two teammates agree, so I'm happy to go along with that. You're saying that it's Nick, Nick. and it's the yeah. toe and it's the email. Yeah. Zazzy, <laughs> would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Zazie, and Miranda and I once tried out <laughs> the Yes, Zazie did try out for a uh, ladies' professional football team with Miranda. Thank you very much, Zazie. <laughs> For some high speed lying in our final round, quick fire lies. And we'll start with uh, David Mitchell. I killed a rat with my BAFTA. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that's true. That's I want that to be true. If it is true. You got a BAFTA? <laughs> <laughs> the rat? The rat was in some bin bags that were sort of outside, on, um, sort of round the corner from my kitchen. Can I, can I ask a question? Is this the BAFTA you won when one of the other nominees was me? <laughs> um, I don't want to make you feel small, Rob, but it was the other one. <laughs> How did you kill it? I, I didn't mean to kill it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, you didn't I, mean to kill it. Just meant to no, award well, it with uh, the bathroom. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, 
I run into the flat. Yeah. I grab the BAFTA. Where is the BAFTA? The flat? It's on a bookshelf. Right. On display. Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah. It's Big got end. lights around it. Yeah. <laughs> it's in what I call my me room. Yeah. <laughs> I then go outside with the, with the BAFTA. I hold the BAFTA at arm's length, <laughs> sort of over where the bin bags were. <laughs> and I drop it. And, and you then get scuttle so you, so around the corner. With, do you drop it with the idea of just shoe? That sort of sort of shoe, but maybe I'm maybe I'm entertaining the possibility of injuring it, and I'm, I don't <laughs> like that side of myself. And by absolute coincidence, it's landed right down on the rat. Bam! Wow! And then there's silence. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> now that's where you're wrong. Right. Why? You get a squeal. Just a little. I'd like to thank my family, and then it would die. <laughs> I know about rats. So, have you killed oh. a rat? Yeah, my dogs kill rats. And did it squeal? Squeal like hell. Well, mm. dogs are much crueler than BAFTAs. <laughs> True or lie? Ooh, I, I'm really tall on this one. Mm. What do you think, Nick? No, you attack a rat from a distance. You do not go hunting into your me room looking for something heavy. <laughs> You think it's a lie? Mm. You're not sure. I'm utterly confused. Well, then I'm going to go. I'm going to go for lie, but there's a bit of me that just thinks it could be true. Yeah, I'll say lie. I'll it's say lie. One. Saying lie? Yeah. David, truth or lie? It is a lie. Yes, it's a lie. David didn't kill a rat with his bathtub. You mustn't get obsessed by meaningless awards, as I was telling my children, Oscar, Emmy, and Brit, only yesterday. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, that's me. This is the sweatshirt that my wife and I put on together when we are cozying up on a chilly evening. We call it the Cuddle Jumper. <laughs> Can I just ask for the full demonstration with Nick? Would that be okay? <laughs> Can we see a model? Can Nick, can you model with Rob the cuddle jumper? Prefer not to. Well, yeah. <laughs> we all prefer not to. That's why I got in quick. Because <laughs> I know where it was heading. <laughs> yeah, you can cuddle on with him and you can... Uh... I have to get in there. <laughs> Yourself as a bit of an apprentice with this. There we go. <laughs> Stick your... <laughs> How do we? <laughs> hey, you have to get your arm down. <laughs> Quite nice, actually. All right. You can you just sit in my lap, then? <laughs> <laughs> right. Ooh. Ask. Who ask... wants to ask first? So, Both teams. Uh, Nick, how, how does it feel? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's my phone, by the way. <laughs> Hard to describe accurately. <laughs> Nick, will you help me and turn this way? <laughs> because. room is very drafty. <laughs> so, we, oh, what are you doing? Whoa, 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 come back. It's very drafty. And we saw this on a shopping channel, and we ordered it for a laugh, and it's actually, I mean, you'd have to admit, it's very cosy. <laughs> it looks like a French elegant dummy now. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Orville's let himself go, hasn't he? <laughs> So we ordered it, and we said we don't wear it every night, but we do wear it, is, we do wear it sometimes. Is this the position you will be in, where the, your wife will be? Sl- no, sl- because it, we have more than one chair in our television room, <laughs> so we so we sit on the sofa It'd side by side. On the sofa, wouldn't yeah, it? but we haven't got a sofa. Well, so that's we a can't. good question. You have more than one chair. Have you got more than one jumper? It's a cuddle jumper. Well, why why do wear get... jumpers and cuddle up? Why did you get it in orange? <laughs> we wanted that Guantanamo feel, you know. <laughs> Do they have pants, do you? No. <laughs> you could have pants, couldn't you? Three legs. 
you suggesting that you lose the pants? <laughs> Does the design lend itself to intimacy? Yes. Not tonight, it doesn't. <laughs> Time for a guess. What are you going to say, Lee? Uh, Miranda. I just really. I hope. want to get in your jumper now. Rebecca, Rebecca, this if does put some pressure on you. So what do you think, Lee? I don't want to rush you. I'm really cosy. <laughs> so what are you saying, truth or lie? Um... <laughs> What's happening? Um... We... Consult our other team member. Come over here. <laughs> Do we think it's true or a lie? I don't know what the question is. The question is, does he cuddle, does he, does he cuddle up to his wife with In his this jumper? jumper? No. No. And Nick, he's got strong thighs, this boy. Yeah, and you've got a very bony bum. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I think it might be true. I think it's true. In a bizarre, okay. quick as you like. We'll, we'll go for true. You're yeah. saying true, and what are you saying? Oh, I forgot. Let's lie. go back and ask Nick. <laughs> we said it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Well, I can tell you, it's actually a lie. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now what do we do? <laughs> Thank goodness it's a lie. Uh, it isn't the sweatshirt that my wife and I put on together when we're cozying up on a chilly evening. <laughs> so, oh, and uh, that noise signals time is up and it's the end of the show. And I can reveal that uh, David's team have three points, but Lee has won with five. <laughs> But it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week is Nick Hewer. <laughs> yes, Nick Hewer, who hasn't deceived the public so much since he had a picture taken with Lord Sugar, and they both look the same height. Good night. <laughs>
And Terry is first up. So, Terry, would you reveal all, please? I deliberately set fire to my colleague's script whilst they were live on air. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hmm. was, was this a... Uh, did you say colleagues, as in this, this happened a lot, or the script belonging to one colleague? I used to do it on a regular basis. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> enough of your sex life, Terry. <laughs> you flatter me. <laughs> Is there footage of this, if it was live? It's sex life, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, there's no footage. It was in Ireland on Irish radio and it was just a little prank of mine to while my colleagues were reading the news or announcements, I would sneak in behind them and set fire to the script <laughs> from the bottom. So, so they, would, they would be holding these scripts in their hand? As it disappeared in front of them. <laughs> This is the news. Often the news, and sometimes a Beethoven concert. <laughs> I, I was indiscriminate. Do you use matches? Because you'd hear the sound, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. But I struck the matches before I came into the studio. I'm a swift mover. <laughs> well, you Safety can't... matches. You can't move too swiftly with a match because it goes out. Look, that's, that's what your jacket is for. You keep it in there, <laughs> sneak in, they don't see you, you smile. <laughs> How did your victims react, Terry? I was the senior man, and uh, I took no nonsense. If they didn't like it, too bad. <laughs> Hang on, Terry, sorry. What year was this? Just after the Napoleonic Wars. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about 21. Would the listeners ever get wind of the blaze? No, because th there's, there's no chance of any scent on the radio. But what I... <laughs> Um, so we think, what do we think? Kevin? I don't know, I think it, I think it, it would be common knowledge. Okay, <coughs> Kevin thinks yeah, it's a lie. Yeah, I agree, I think we'd already know about this. Okay, so I think it's a lie. we'll go for lie. You're saying that it's a lie. Terry Wogan, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Oh. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Uh, Terry did deliberately set fire to his colleague's script whilst they were live on air. Uh, at least they can laugh about it now. They can't move their hands, but they can laugh. <laughs> it was a prank. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you're next. I once found a suitcase and took it to the police station. When they opened it, it contained 34 bunches of bananas. <laughs> Uh, where did you find the suitcase? At a train station. Um, well, there are lots of... Do you want a specific so, train station? Well, no, I'm just sort of thinking that you, you're in a train station, you see a suitcase, you think, I must take that to the police. It that's, was, uh, that's potentially a, a bad approach. No, I was just lying, and I'd said to a couple of people, is that your suitcase? And it was in the climate of fear, and I started to think, well, maybe I should be a good citizen. So I took the suitcase over, and I headed straight to uh, traffic, British Transport Police guy and told them what had happened. So you, mo you moved the suitcase you thought might be a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> did, you also, did you also give it a good rattle? <laughs> <to see whether. laughs> it wasn't so much I thought it was a bomb, I just thought maybe somebody had left a suitcase. But, well, that wouldn't be a response to the climate of fear, though. That would have been a response oh, to the climate I, I, of I forgetfulness. Panic, I panicked. <laughs> <laughs> Who opened the suitcase to divulge well, all those bananas? I came in and the British Transport Police guy took it into his office and then they scanned it with some... Whatever they scan it with, some Those things. I get weight How much bananas? How much bananas? At the heart of this is why would anybody put 34 <laughs> bunches of bananas into a suitcase? That's exactly what the chief tether inspector said. He was baffled. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> Did they ever find this guy? Was, I never kept you know. up to date. I don't have a clue. I just left it. You haven't kept I, in touch? No. You... Well, <laughs> he's here tonight. <laughs> I'm the king of the swingers! <laughs> what I doubt here is that, is that if you've taken a piece of unattended luggage to the police, 
I don't think they're going to then immediately open it. Well, it was, it was no longer unattended when I got to the police. No, I was but you're, you're, <laughs> saying, but you're saying... But that's not going to reassure them, because you're saying, I've no idea whether or not this has got a bomb in it. So... I never use those words. You don't, you don't use the word bomb in this situation. That just... You do a mind. mime. I'm, I'm worried this might be... What? <laughs> Right, we need a decision. Truth or lie? Well, it's, mm. you think it's a lie? I do, really. Yeah, I think it's a lie. Well, we'll say it's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie. OK, uh, Kevin, were you telling the truth? Eh, uh, it's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well yes, yeah, uh, it was a very big lie. Kevin didn't take a suitcase containing 34 bunches of bananas to a <laughs> police station. Uh, next up, Robert Webb. As a child, I had so many imaginary friends, we formed an imaginary gang. Did the gang have a name? Yes, the gang were called the Guy Bys. The what? <laughs> the Guy Bys? They were called the Guy Bys. How are you spelling that? I never had cause to spell it. <laughs> I'm talking about, you know... If I... you had to spell it now, how would you spell G it? G-Y <laughs> hyphen <Yeah>. by B-B-I-E-S. <laughs> How many were, were in the gang? There were, there were quite a few. There were 12. <laughs> the same number as apostles. Well, <laughs> it, does, and you... it does occur to me that this was a harmless little messiah complex. Right. <laughs> So did you appoint yourself head of the imaginary? Yeah, I was basically gang. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> did you still keep in touch with the rest of the gang? <laughs> they, they, were, they were imaginary friends, so they sort of disappeared as soon as I stopped thinking about them. <laughs> what? Uh, did you have names for the guy buys? They, I think I, used, I borrowed names from people I knew at school and my brother. They were like Mark and Andrew and all the apostles. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> They were, uh, yeah, and Chris. And Judas. <laughs> Chris, Chris isn't. Chris, and one. obviously Judas Iscariot. Yes. yes. <laughs> Did you have a, a favourite guy by? <laughs> Chris was good. <laughs> Did you have a rival gang, the guy by? Was there a feud or anything like that? Well, there was always the. Our, our main enemy was the Joker, um, which I think, <laughs> I think I so borrowed just... from Batman. <laughs> What would he do, the Joker? Oh, just, you know, rob banks and stuff, and, and we would, um, you know, we'd chase him on our bike. All <laughs> <laughs> well, 13. Well, I mean, they were very good at getting on the back of the bike. Yeah. You were like a, a red cross chopper. display team, weren't you? Or they were. They sort of, <laughs> sort of imagined them sort of diagonally stacked. <laughs> Did you all sleep in one bed? Oh, I, they, they weren't really... I mean, they, Into this, it. This is <laughs> As much as I encourage the gay boys, the guy boys. <laughs> no, no it was, they were very much a pre-sexual phenomenon. Have we, have we established yet why they were actually called the guy boys? No, it's just a sort of sound that children make. Well, that this child made. <laughs> well, he, see, the thing is, guy boys sounds like baby talk. You know, it might be like and just some words that you formulated. Cause, but, mm. but, but you also were aware of Marvel comic... Enemies at that Batman age. wasn't a Marvel character. Batman yeah. wasn't Marvel? No, no. But Marvel's Spider Man, Captain America, the Hulk. <laughs> Superman was action comics. Oh. I hate him when he does that Stephen Fry thing, don't you? <laughs> All that knowledge. All that knowledge. <laughs> um, <laughs> an answer is what we need, so. <laughs> Just a minute. Are what? you doing me again? I'm, I'm flirting round the edges of you, Terry. <laughs> you're not careful, I'll set fire to you. Right. Um, right, what are you going to say then? What are you, tr truth or lie? Sounds plausible. Young guy, read a few comics, read the Bible, merged the two in his head and formed the guy bite. Wow. It's like having Inspector Frost in the Sounds studio right. with us. <laughs> Um, what about you, Katie? Which way are you leaning? Well, I think he clearly has a wonderful imagination. That's clear. Mm. So I think, yes, it's true. OK. I will mm. say it's true. You're going to say true? OK. Robert Webb, truth or lie? It is a true thing. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, it was all true. Uh, when Robert was a child, he did form an imaginary gang from his many imaginary friends. You know, it may seem odd, but loads of people have tons of imaginary friends. It's called being on Facebook. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Lee's team have two. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Tony. <laughs> Right, uh, Kevin, we'll start with you. What is your relationship with Tony? Uh, this is my mate, Tony. We were once questioned by the police for stealing a life-size cardboard cutout of Hugh Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, how do you know uh, Tony? <clears throat> this is Tony, and he um, freed me from a vending machine when I got my foot stuck in the push compartment. <laughs> Finally, Lee, how do you know Tony? This is Tony, and until today, I had never met this man before, but the person that was supposed to be doing this tonight didn't turn up. So I grabbed the first person I saw outside the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Kevin's partner in crime, Katie's snack machine <laughs> saviour, or, or Lee's stand-in man. Right, David, off you go. Well, Lee's one is quite difficult to cross-examine, isn't it? <laughs> Essentially, what Lee's saying is, here's Tony, he's a random bloke. <laughs> <laughs> but who was supposed to come, Lee? Well, had it gone to plan today, I would have said, this is Graham, and he's my self-defence instructor, because I'm learning self-defence. Right. <laughs> what happened to Graham? Did he get beaten up? <laughs> the story I am told is that he hurt his arm this morning during a self-defence class, and then, very late in the day, he got in the car to come here and had some turn because of the painkillers he was on and cancelled and said, I can't come. Well, it's a sad old story. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what was Tony doing here before you found him? Uh, he's uh, a joiner, which uh, well, is somebody yeah. that puts wood together. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't want you thinking he was somebody that just randomly he just, joined clubs. He just... <laughs> <laughs> he's a very sensible guy. Yeah. I'm a joiner. What are you doing? Really I'm going to join a club. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. The club boys? Yeah. yeah. OK. <laughs> where, where were you in the, in the complex? Well, I'm not sure how good this is for national television, but I'll tell you, David. <laughs> I was just outside that door where some people go out for a cigarette. I think, I think you're aware of that door, David. I'm aware of the I'm door. sorry if David's parents are watching to break the news like this. But David I occasionally yeah. does that. Yeah. And I'm not talking cigarettes either. No. <laughs> to, to me, it will always be the heroin door. <laughs> what sort of incentive did you offer this good man to come here and make a complete numpty of himself? Well, well, well answer the man, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> The rejected chuckle brother has got the better of me again. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I must say, yeah. Lee's story is incredibly plausible. It's, and incredibly tedious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, uh, I, that's why it rings so true. Kevin, your partner in crime, what, what did this man do with you? Um, I think crime's a strong word, Terry, from a man who has got arson in his past. <laughs> We were questioned by the police, not charged out, and just questioned for stealing a life-size cardboard cut of Hugh Grant. So what, did you, what were you going to do with Hugh Grant? <laughs> We'd went to a blockbuster video, and none, nothing really caught my eye, except the life-size cardboard cut of Hugh Grant. What? <laughs> I, I, sorry, I didn't understand a word of that. <laughs> we went to blockbuster video, OK? <laughs> And nothing in quarter eye, Terry. Finally, he's talking normal. Exactly. <laughs> it shows to every Scottish right. person if you just made a little bit of effort. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 I saw the scene of a life size cut, cut to your grant on the way out. 
It was threatening to be a pretty dull evening until we seen this and we thought we'll steal this and have a laugh on the way back home. And we were walking home, a police car pulled up and said, where are you going with, with Hugh Grant, lads? And <laughs> <laughs> the police guy could not see the funny side at all and decided to put him in the passenger seat, put us two in the back and drive. <laughs> We haven't touched on Katie yet. No, we haven't. Right. Um, yes, you've been told about that, Terry. That is, we told you quite clearly before now. we started. Yeah. Where right. was the vending machine? It was at Cardiff Central train station. What, what did the vending machine vend? <laughs> My... What is this thing you call love, human? <laughs> what does it vend? It vended the normal stuff, drinks, chocolate bars. What were you doing with your foot <clears> in the vending machine? Well, I put the money in, yeah. and the, I was trying to get a drink, and I could see that it had come out a bit, but not properly. Yeah. And after trying to get out with my hands, I tried my foot. <laughs> and it got stuck? Yes. Oh. But is it, was it a little hole or a big slot? It was like a tray thing. And how did, how did this fine man help you? He was working at the train station, yeah. and he's clocked it and came along and said, do you want a hand? And you said, we <laughs> must keep in touch? <laughs> Can I have your email address? We didn't stay in touch, but I knew how to find him. How, how did you because find him? Because he's still working at Cardiff train station, Cardiff Central. Mm. But what I don't understand, right, the, the thing's on. fallen down. Yes. And you, you're having difficulty getting it out with your hand. Now, Correct. hands are basically better than feet. <laughs> yes. That sort of thing. I I wonder why you that. sort of think, if the hand can't do it, why is the foot going to develop the knack? No, my logic was, I tried with the hands, and I thought sort of a kick, brute force... Ah. ..you know, might work instead. That was, was the logic. Was it the sort of door? You know, because often the, the slot at the bottom has got a sort of door, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it had I a door. I offered slot, and she called it a tray. Yeah. <laughs> then it's not a tray, is it? It's not a tray. A tray would be <laughs> removable. <laughs> Good cop, guy by cop. <laughs> <laughs> How did he release the foot? What exactly did he do? He had a key to open the front <laughs> bit. <laughs> so you just went back and... Whoa! <laughs> uh, well, what do you think is the most plausible story, then, Terry? Do you think it's...? I think, and once again, I may be putting my faith, as indeed I have throughout my life, in a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so you believe Katie? He looks Welsh. <laughs> I think Lee or Kevin. I, I'm having some Guys, difficulty. I need some consensus. I'm having <laughs> trouble picturing the foot lodged in the tray. Are you? Are you? So you're? If you're saying you're going towards Lee, you, you have to then accept that he is having self-defence lessons. Ooh, um, well, that's a good point. Because yeah. if you know, you know <laughs> if it, why are you getting self-defence lessons? <laughs> Well, because my, my wife uh, decided to take self-defence lessons and she said she asked me to come with her. We have private lessons and she, he comes round to the apps. I, I wasn't oh. expecting it, it was no. on the NHS. I'm sure I'm running into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say then, chaps? Mm. Is Tony Kevin's Hugh Grant thief? Gosh, crikey, crikey, gosh. <laughs> Katie's vending machine hero or Lee's last resort? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, dear. I think maybe. I think maybe Kevin. Ke Kevin. I think I go for Kevin. And you think it's Katie? I don't know. So I'm going to say we think it's Katie. Okay. Um, Tony, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Tony, and me and Kevin did steal a life-size <laughs> huge <laughs> Were there any charges? No, it was a caution. And you're proud of it, aren't you? I can see that... <laughs> There's a real pride in your face. <laughs> you feel you should have a Duke of Edinburgh award, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Thank you very much, Tony. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies. We will start with... <clears throat> it's David Mitchell. When I was 12, I saved up all my pocket money and bought a rowing boat that I never used. <laughs> Lee. Right. Um, how much was the boat? <clears throat> I think it was about £120. Oh. 
How really? much did you make pocket money a week? Oh, two grand, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, but I think it would be something like one pound. Whoa, 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 whoa. You earned a pound a week. Pocket money. Yeah. The boat was 120 pounds. Yeah. You know, I had the occasional windfall. Christmas, Christmas. and birthdays. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas and birthdays. Like, lottery. Christmas and birthdays and the other festival only uh, our family did. Oh. <laughs> Where were you planning to go in this boat? Um, I planned to sort of row, row around in it when on holiday. And how did you propose to get it on holiday? You had your eye on a nice Ford Fiesta with a tow bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at that age, I would often holiday with my parents. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's like holiday with yeah, this year? Yeah. Parents! <laughs> Come yeah, here. To go I've got this well before. Parents, I've got a proposal for you. <laughs> <laughs> and what stopped the plan? The, um... Basically, the boat was a bit too big. Oh. A bit too big for, for what? what? The sea? <laughs> <Wouldn't>... <laughs> Pushed it into the water, he kept hitting France. <laughs> can't, can't get it into the. Try it sideways, Dick! Where did you keep it? Uh, it was, I think, in our front garden. You think? Yeah. Did you ever sit in the boat in the front <laughs> garden? <laughs> row, pretending. Yeah. Row, with a knotted hanky. <laughs> so, well, which way are you going to go with it? Truth or lie? What do we think, yeah, Katie? I've... Sort of, yeah, I think it's true. I'm going to go for a. I'm going to go for a lie. I would say that it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Okay, David, truth or lie? It is true. Oh! <laughs> yes, it's true. When David was 12, he did spend all his pocket money on a rowing boat that he never used. Interestingly, David is one of the few people to own a boat they can never use who hasn't been a contestant on Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <coughs> it's Lee. After an incident with a permanent marker, I had to go to my son's parents' evening with a moustache and glasses drawn on my <laughs> David's team, do you believe that? OK. Who drew this on your face, or did you do it to yourself? Yes. <laughs> I did it to myself. I was on the way to my son's parents' evening. <laughs> I'm thinking, I haven't got a tie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no, I'll pretend I'm somebody okay. else instead. <laughs> All right, what, what happened? I was asleep one afternoon. My wife thought it would be funny if my son drew the thing on the face. So she said, go and get one of your felts, because the felts are, you know, the, wash, the, the washable ones. He started drawing on my face. I woke up, I laughed a bit, I let him carry on, and then we looked at the pen, <laughs> realised it was permanent marker. <laughs> and when I went to wash it off, it, 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 it came off a bit, but not enough. And we were late, so we just had to go. <laughs> can't, um, can't you try, I don't know, white spirit or something? Doesn't, doesn't but, but, work. But, but, I could have tried a blowtorch as well. <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, silly, silly bang. <laughs> what sort of moustache was it? Was it a sort of twirly one? Or just a sort of more Hitler-type thing? Or... <laughs> Couldn't no, no. go into your son's school in a, with a Hitler. Well... Wow. <laughs> could you? <laughs> well, you definitely couldn't, David. Yeah. That, would, that would be wrong. <laughs> so, David, which way? Well, I think... We, you think it's a lie? Yeah. You, think you think it's a lie? We're going to say it's You're a lie. You're going to say it's yes. a lie. OK, Lee, truth or lie? It is, in fact, a lie. Ah, yeah, you. <laughs> it's a lie. Lee didn't go to his son's parents' evening with a moustache and glasses drawn on his face. Next. <laughs> uh, Terry. Every year... I signal the start of Christmas dinner by taking my seat opposite Mrs. Wogan and firing a pistol loaded <laughs> with a blank or blank. <laughs> Marvellous. Hey, what do you think? Oh, well, I've always wanted to say this. It's like a dream come true. Is it the current Mrs. Wogan? <laughs> yes, the poor soul. <laughs> Do you, ever, do you ever set fire to her? <laughs> In ways that I will not divulge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where did you get this pistol from? I have a gun license. 
I didn't ask you um, that. Um, uh, <laughs> you, you can answer whatever questions you like. So <laughs> <terrible>. <laughs> And I wouldn't be afraid to use it. <laughs> These are blanks. It's a simple... It's a simple tradition. How did it start, the tradition? Eight, well, years ago. Uh, my father did it before me. Why did he Until do it? Until the accident. <laughs> 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 no, things, you know, develop in families, little traditions. The fun starts in the Wogan household with a pistol shot. <laughs> It's a bit frightening at first for the grandchildren, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they get over it. So and they know that it's the beginning of the great festival that that granddad <laughs> has fired his pistol. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get the bird out. Right, Lee. Kevin, what do we think? Um, I think it's a lie. Kevin's saying a lie. Kevin's Katie, a lie. What are you Katie? saying? It just seems a very dangerous thing to do with your family around. I, I think it's a lie. You say a lie? I say it's a you lie. say it's a lie. Terry, is it true or is it a lie? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. A Terry does not signal the start of Christmas dinner by firing a pistol loaded with a blank or blanks. Although Terry does have a strict Christmas dinner routine, uh, he asks Mrs. Wogan if she wants stuffing, and then two hours later they enjoy a cold lunch. <laughs> oh, well, that noise uh, signals time's up and it's the end of the show. And I can reveal that in an exciting finish, David's team have won by six points to three. <laughs> But, of course, it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Sir Terry Wogan. Thank you. I don't forget that. Yes. I Sir Terry Wogan, who's, who's such an unscrupulous liar, he makes Eurovision voting look above board. Good night. <laughs>